It's the 30th of July 2020, and workers have started digging a huge hole right outside Parliament in the Canadian capital. Well, when we say digging... That date marked the launch of an extraordinary construction project now taking place underneath the most important building in the entire country. Another blast quickly followed, then another, and three years later, the result was this. A gigantic pit with Canada's answer to Big Ben looming over the precipice. It's all happening now because the future of the nation's most prized asset is on the line. A building that's overseen the last century of this nation's growth. And this mammoth excavation has only just begun. If we asked you to name the top three Canadian cities, what would you go for? Toronto, Montreal and Vancouver would probably feature. They do have the biggest populations by metropolitan area. But don't forget Ottawa. After all, it is the capital city and has been since the country was founded in the 1800s. Queen Victoria chose it for its position near the border of Ontario and Quebec. It's where the English and French-speaking regions meet. And because it was surrounded by forests, meaning it could be more easily defended in case of any aggression from the United States. As if that would ever happen. We're spending hundreds of billions a year to protect it. Our military is at their disposal. They should be a state. To cement their newfound federal status, Canada needed somewhere to house their parliament. They decided to put it here, on a hill overlooking the Ottawa River. It would consist of three separate buildings or blocks, arranged around a large lawn with the biggest in the middle. This centre block was to be the home of the House of Commons and the Senate Chambers, along with offices for MPs, ceremonial spaces and a library. Construction began in 1859 and was finished 17 years later, but it was to have a relatively short life. In 1916, the building burnt down in a huge fire, the true cause of which remains a mystery. Only the Library of Parliament survived. A new centre block was quickly commissioned. Finished in 1927, this one lasted a lot longer. In fact, it's still standing today. Like the original, it was built in the Gothic Revival style, with gargoyles, grotesques and friezes adorning the exterior. But it wasn't just a simple replica. The Peace Tower was built to commemorate those who died in the First World War, and was 70% taller than its predecessor. With 53 bells inside, it's just a few metres shorter than London's Big Ben. Don't try and beat us at parliamentary buildings, guys. Stick to the hockey. And yet, while the building might have remained intact, over the last century, it has deteriorated pretty heavily. When surveyors inspected it, they found eroded concrete supports, water infiltration in several areas, and some of the structural steel beginning to rust and break down. It's also now seen as vulnerable to threats that must not have been seen as a big problem back in the 20s. The structure has no earthquake protection, and before you ask, yes, Canada does get some earthquakes. They're usually small, but there have been a few over magnitude 7 in the past. Another one of those, anywhere near Ottawa, could be catastrophic for a building like this, made from more than 24 types of stone. Then there's the fact that it lacks the sort of ultra-high security you'd expect from a site of this importance. And despite attracting more than 3 million visitors to Parliament Hill every year, there isn't a great deal for them to do or see, and it can get overcrowded. Which is why the centre block is now midway through a $5 billion upgrade that'll see it not just fully renovated, but also structurally reinforced. It's being led by Public Services and Procurement Canada and is the largest and most complex project of its kind in the country's history. You only need to gaze out across that front lawn to see the scale of what's happening, because half of it's gone. In its place for the time being is a 23 metre deep pit stretching across the entire length of the building. To make it, explosives were used to cut through the bedrock, with 40,000 truckloads needed to carry the material away. Blasting began in 2020 and didn't complete until 2023. So what on earth is all that for? Well, it's to create room for a massive underground welcome centre. More on that in a bit. By the start of 2025, concrete was being poured for the parts of the new centre that have to go in first, such as walls, stairs and elevator shafts. But the most complicated part of the excavation work is yet to come. The welcome centre has to extend underneath the main building, which currently has no basement levels at all. 
They've decided to add some in now, more than a hundred years after the building was first constructed. At the same time, a base isolation system is now going to be installed to give the building earthquake protection. To do this, the entire centre block must be separated from its foundation. Now, understandably, that ain't simple. Before any major excavation is done, the centre block has to be fully supported. What they're doing is placing it all on temporary posts before the building is then put on top of a new structural grid of steel and reinforced concrete. Around 800 piles are being driven into the ground, grouped together with steel bracing to create columns. Workers will then excavate downwards in between these columns, and after that the basement levels will begin to rise from the bottom up. Then it's time for those base isolators, more than 500 of them. They're going to sit in between the bottom of the building and the new foundation. Their job is effectively to separate the building from the planet it sits on. They act as giant shock absorbers in an earthquake. Although base isolators are not new, we've seen them fitted under nuclear fusion reactors and huge telescopes, this is the first time they've been installed in this way. It's an enormous engineering feat, but far from the only big challenge that workers on this site are having to face. Specialists were called in to secure the four pinnacles around the top of the Peace Tower while they awaited repair. They did this by running large straps from the base of the flagpole and wrapping them around each pinnacle to hold them steady, and that meant abseiling across the clock faces. It's important because we know what can happen when a damaged clock tower pinnacle isn't fixed. Don't worry, we're not going to show you the rest because it's horrible, and this only happens in small English villages. Back to Ottawa, and while those brave fellas were hanging out at the top of the tower, they also fitted monitors used to measure vibration during construction. Around 500 of these have been placed right across the site, because a rehabilitation project that ends up doing more damage than it fixes wouldn't be great. Meanwhile, further below, another team is having to restore the stones that make up the exterior, all 365,000 of them. If you thought cleaning your patio was time consuming, then this is a whole other level. But thankfully, they have more than just a pressure washer at their disposal. Lasers. Yes, really. This team is armed with tools that use focused high-energy light to vaporise surface deposits, clearing away dirt while leaving the stonework unscathed. Inside centre block, the building's been stripped right back to its structural elements, and efforts to restore and preserve over 20,000 heritage assets are underway. 50 rooms are being refurbished, some containing unique and irreplaceable works of art, and around 250 stained glass windows are also getting a much needed touch up. Then there's the decorative arts team, who've been making their way across the building from east to west. They're examining the hundreds of sculptures that can be found almost everywhere you look, repairing any that have been harmed by years of erosion and weathering. So there's an incredible amount of work going on here, from heavy drilling and reinforcement down to the most detailed artistry. But you might be wondering where the people who are normally here have got to, the MPs, senators and other high-ranking individuals who are more likely to wear suits than construction high-vis vests. Well, they've had to move out for now. While all this is going on, the House of Commons has relocated to the West Block, and the Senate is working out of, well, the Senate of Canada building, which kind of makes sense. And there's a while to go until they can come back. This project is set to complete in 2031, and the Centre Block won't fully reopen for another year after that. When Mark Carney and his colleagues are finally let back in, they and the public will be able to admire the stunning new Welcome Centre in all its glory. Visitors and parliamentarians will enter under a new raised pathway outside the main building. After passing through a secure screening area, they'll come to the main hall with the foundation of the Peace Tower forming part of the main design. They'll be able to see the top of it too, through the skylights that cover the new space, filling the hall with light. With connections to the west and east blocks, the centre is going to act as a secure, accessible front door to Parliament. As for the centre block itself, Canadians are going to be handed back a treasure that has been both restored and fully modernised, ready for another century of service. It's obvious why historic buildings need to be maintained, but it's not often that you see a restoration project go to the lengths of what we're currently seeing unfold in Ottawa. 
This isn't just about patching up a crumbling icon. It's a chance to ensure it can withstand whatever the future holds. If you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.